Hello there, my fellow space cadets, and welcome to another lore video from the universe of Battletech. After talking about some spherical military dropships previously, and checking out your votes, I decided that the best way to continue covering dropships is to talk about the second important design type, aka the Aerodyne dropships. So today we're gonna cover no less than four of these designs. Don't forget to stay until the end and even you can influence the future of the series. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The first thing we're gonna cover today is known as the Achilles. With a length of 125 meters, a width of 37.4 meters, and a height of 23 meters. A relatively rare design, the Achilles class is a deadly threat to dropships and aerospace fighters alike. The design of this non-atmospheric craft is relatively simple, with over half the ship's mass taken by the very powerful Zevex-12 drive system. This thing is capable of unleashing up to 6 Gs of thrust, and gives the Achilles surprising agility even against aerospace fighters. But this excellence obviously comes at a price, as the Zevex-12 requires much more frequent and diligent maintenance than many other drive systems. Despite the well-engineered drive dampening and isolation mounting surrounding the Zevex-12, the thrust levels higher than 4 Gs can create vibrations which shake the craft so violently it can cause serious damage to both the crew and to the ship, especially to the ammunition feeding mechanism. 60 tons of armor and 124 heat sinks, combined with 300 tons of fuel, gives it a lot of endurance for its role. Much like the lighter Avenger class, the Achilles forms the vanguard of planetary assault fleets, a role that led to attrition rates much higher than the production during the succession wars. The largest user of the Achilles in the inner sphere is the Draconis Combine, although the loss of the facilities on Schuyler to Clan Smoke Jaguar prior to its recapture during Operation Bulldog has only made this design even rarer. Incredibly well armed, the Achilles was the closest thing to an actual warship in the technological decline period of the Succession Wars. Two PPCs and two LRM-20s, plus two large and medium lasers mounted in the nose, allows the vessel to unleash blistering fire upon enemies in the forward arc. Each of the wings mounts a single PPC and autocannon 20, supported by a pair of LRM-20s and medium lasers facing forward. With another PPC, autocannon 10, large laser, and two medium lasers pointing rearward. Directly aft, the Achilles mounts a third AC-20, two medium lasers, and an LRM-10. Four tons of reloads for each of the smaller autocannons, eight for the Mammoth AC-20s, and a total of 17 tons of long-range missile reloads allows this vessel to engage pretty much anything it wants. Coming as somewhat of a shock, given that no Capellan or Marek facility ever made the Achilles previously, an upgraded version of the Achilles first came out of the facilities at Rashpur Owens Incorporated above Capella in 3055. Replacing all the standard heatsinks with double heatsinks, this upgraded Achilles has far greater endurance. The PPCs and the large lasers were upgraded to the ER models. The standard mediums are replaced by medium pulse lasers, and Artemis IV is added to each LRM launcher. The four AC-5s were dropped entirely and replaced with two Gauss rifles with five tons of reloads. The two AC-10s share five tons of ammo, the three AC-20s share six tons of ammo, and the combined 15 tons of missiles are shared by the LRM racks. The second vessel for today is the Avenger. With a length of 50.5 meters, a width of 42 meters, and a height of 11.9 meters. One of the smallest dropships ever made, despite its size, the Avenger features a lot of firepower rivaling even that of a Union class armor almost equal to that of an overlord, and the speed and maneuverability surpassing both of them. 
found mostly in the navies of the successor states, Avengers are usually reserved for major planetary assaults, forming the vanguard of the initial attack and clearing the path for the transport dropships that follow. Given its position at the forefront of the largest of battles, their attrition rates were obviously high. To support the troops on the ground, they could also be used for strafing and bombing runs. The Avenger is also notable for being one of the few aerodyne vessels built for planetary operation, which doesn't feature a secondary transit drive, and only the single rear maneuvering drive. On the ground, this means that up is towards the vertical stabilizer, while under thrust, up is towards the nose. This requires an exotic layout, with long corridors on the ground becoming lift shafts in space, and each room and its furniture being designed to be quickly switched between either orientation. Given its first strike role, the Avenger is impressively armed on all angles. In the nose weapon base are two AC-5s, an AC-20, an LRM-20, two large and two medium lasers. In each wing are a single PPC, a pair of AC-5s, an LRM-20 rack, and two medium lasers. Facing the rear are an AC-2, an LRM-20, and two medium lasers. The large ammo base of the Avenger, especially for the LRM racks, allow it to keep up a steady rate of attack. The Avenger was also the first inner sphere dropship to be refitted with rediscovered technology from the Helm memory core and the only one in actual production before the clan invasion disrupted similar upgrades for the other classes. The main changes are a switch to double heatsinks and update of the weaponry. Each set of the twin AC-5s in the nose and wings have been replaced by a single Gauss rifle. The large lasers are upgraded to ER variants and the medium lasers for new Pulse counterparts. The LRM launchers have all been upgraded with Artemis IV fire control system and the only weapon removed completely was the rear-facing AC-2. The third aerodyne vessel of today is the Gazelle, with a length of 79 meters, a width of 73 meters, and a height of 28 meters. The Gazelle was one of the smaller transport dropships in use, being generally operating alongside the Fury and the Leopard, and capable of carrying a complete 15-vehicle company of armored fighting vehicles. When first designed, the Gazelle was intended to operate with smaller and lighter combat vehicles, designed prior to the succession wars. Later, it was modified, resulting in the hold of the craft's nose being enlarged to cope. The modifications came at the cost of the crew quarters and the cargo capacity greatly reducing comfort and inhibiting the design's endurance on longer missions. Like many other troop transports, the Gazelle features a relatively limited defensive array of weaponry. Two medium lasers, an autocannon 5 and one LRM-20 fill the nose base, while one PPC, SRM-6 and three medium lasers are fitted in forward-facing mounts in each wing. To discourage pursuit, one large laser and a pair of medium lasers are carried in the app. One ton of autocannon ammo, four tons of long-range missiles, and two tons of short-range missiles are usually enough for the shorter duration missions. The fourth and final vessel for today is the Gorgon. With a length of 103 meters, a width of 86 meters, and a height of 39 meters. Designed by elements of the former Free Worlds League near the end of the 31st century, the Gorgon is a medium-sized fighter carrier. It first appeared in 3096 and was intended to act as an interdiction vessel, with the fighter complement as the main means of carrying out its mission. It would serve the splintered Free Worlds League well into the 32nd century, and even today it continues serving the partially reunited House Marek. Although designed and built as an interdiction and force projection vessel, the Gorgon is ironically considered too slow for the actual interdiction missions. However, it does carry a large payload of fuel in order to keep itself and its fighter complement supplied for the mission. Often deployed in place of assault or pocket warship type dropships, 
The Gorgon is fitted with 51 tons of ferro-aluminum armor to allow it to survive the rigors of combat engagement. Its armor is nearly evenly spread throughout the hull, with slightly enhanced nose and wings section armor. One of the ship's unique features is the cargo bay running the length of the hull, which can hold up to a thousand tons of cargo to sustain the fighter complement and itself. However, during the course of its active use, many ships would have their cargo bays modified into an internal bomb bay, effectively allowing the Gorgon to act as a massive bomber carrying aerospace fighters, that could deliver devastating bombing runs to both space and ground targets. The weapons of the ship include three ERPPCs and three Gauss rifles with 48 rounds of ammo in the nose section. Two weapon bays provide the ship with a mighty weapon array along its wing section, which includes a heavy PPC with a pair of Artemis IV guided 15 tube long range missile launchers with 48 volleys worth of fire. From these wings arc six anti missile systems, three per wing section, providing a screen of point defense fire against small to capital scale missiles. The aft weapons include a pair of Artemis IV 15 tube LRMs and three more anti-missile systems. For today's poll regarding dropships, I am once again only gonna have two choices. Would you like to see option A, more military dropships, or option B, some civilian dropships? To vote, simply write your choice in the comments below, and I thank you for participating. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about these types of Aerodyne dropships for today. Don't know about you, but I think these are a bit cooler than the spherical dropships, as you can see them as a giant fighters and not just ball-shaped transports. Did you know any of the models described today? Are you a fan of any of them, or did you use them in your games before? Let us know what your thoughts or experiences with these things are in the comments below. If you found the video informative or entertaining, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. You can also click the bell notification icon to stay more up to date. Thank you very much for watching to the end and I wish you a great and healthy day. This is GDN signing out.